Exchange rates in the short run are going to be determined by the supply and demand analysis. Now, when we have supply and demand analysis, we are going back to traditional microeconomic theory. So we have a market where we have supply curve and the demand curve. Supply for domestic assets will be assumed to be fixed. So remember, this is not fistfuls of cash that is exchanging hands. But in fact, we are looking at all dollar denominated assets. So foreigners could be buying houses in Canada, putting their money in our bank accounts, buying different type of stocks and bonds issued by Canadian companies or government of Canada bonds. So any domestic asset denominated in Canadian dollar is reflected in the supply curve. Now, because the overall supply of these assets does not drastically change, we're going to assume them to be constant in the short run. And therefore, regardless of exchange rate fluctuation, the supply of these assets will not change in the short run. Demand curve of domestic assets or dollar denominated assets in our case is going to be determined by the relative expected return on our domestic assets. Pretty similar to how we determined the demand curve for bonds in our earlier chapter. Relative expected return on our domestic asset is based on the exchange rate. This is the price of the Canadian dollar in the future, price of the Canadian dollar today, divided by price of the Canadian dollar today. So simple return, value of the dollar in the future, minus the cost of the asset today as a percentage of this initial cost. Now, there are two ways of expressing the exchange rate. Remember, we can express it as euros per dollar, or we can express the exchange rate as dollars per euro. Here we want to look at the price of dollar in terms of the foreign currency. In my example, that is the euro. So which of these would be the appropriate format to use as my exchange rate? By looking at the exchange rate, I want to easily determine whether the price of the dollar is going up or down. And in order to do that, it is most appropriate to use this format for our exchange rate. Because now you can see if the exchange rate rises from 1.5 euros to 1.6 euros, I can buy more euros. So the Canadian dollar has appreciated. Since prices are always put on the y-axis on a market diagram, it's easier to see the fluctuation in the exchange rate as an appreciation and depreciation if we express our exchange rate in this particular format. Note our exchange rate is foreign currency per unit of the domestic currency, or in our case, euros per Canadian dollar. Higher the value on the y-axis, Canadian dollar has appreciated. Lower the value on the y-axis, Canadian dollar has depreciated. So we are measuring the price of dollar in terms of euros. Given this formatting over here, it is now very easy to see what happens to our relative expected return on dollar when its value changes. Holding everything else constant, holding the future value of the dollar constant, if I have a higher value of the dollar today, it will cause my return to go down. So higher the value of the exchange rate today, lower is the relative expected return on dollar denominated assets, and therefore lower is the quantity demanded for dollar denominated assets. And that simply gives us our downward sloping demand curve. Note we are looking at the market for dollar denominated assets when we are swapping them or exchanging them for some alternative currency. So the alternative currency in this case is euros. Price of dollar is expressed as euros per Canadian dollar. If there are changes in the current price, that is not a shift of the curve, but rather movement along the curve. So a higher value of the dollar, quantity demanded decreases compared to the supply of dollars. That creates a surplus in the market and pushes the price down. At lower valuation of the dollar, if the price of the dollar today is quite low, it increases the expected relative return on dollar, and therefore quantity demanded is now a lot higher creates a shortage in the market and pushes the price of the dollar up. Shortages are making the dollar appreciate and surpluses are making the dollar depreciate. Convergence is always at point B, holding everything else constant, where we have the equilibrium exchange rate today. Fluctuations in the dollar will be caused because of shifts in the demand curve. Because remember, the supply is pretty much constant with that vertical supply curve that we just saw. Some major factors that affect the demand curve are the domestic interest rate, then we have the foreign interest rate changes, and lastly, expected future exchange rate. And here you'll see for the last one, your long run determinants of exchange rates will come into play. All those factors concerning productivity, relative price level, uh, trade barriers, and preferences.
all those factors that are affecting our long run value of the dollar will cause the demand for the domestic asset to change today and day by change the current exchange rate. So let's go over them one by one. First of all, we have the domestic interest rate going up. This domestic interest rate increasing could be because of contractionary monetary policy. So Bank of Canada does monetary policy tightening, increases the domestic interest rate. It also could be remember because of the foreign central bank, let's say the European Central Bank conducting a monetary expansion or expansionary monetary policy. When the foreign interest rate goes down, the interest rate in Canada is now relatively higher and this causes the return on dollar assets to go up. And therefore we see increase in demand for dollar assets pushing the exchange rate up. So with the flexible exchange rate regime, we can simply say that our exchange rate follows the same route as our monetary policy. Conversely, we could have changes in the foreign interest rate. And in this example, we're assuming the foreign interest rate is going up. And as the foreign interest rate is going up, the relative expected return on dollar denominated assets is going down. And because of that, demand for our dollar denominated assets is going down. With reduced demand, the exchange rate is being pushed down. For the value of dollar in terms of euros, has gone down. So the exchange rate for Canadian dollar has depreciated. Then out of those three main factors that shift the demand curve, we had the expected future exchange rate. And remember the expected future exchange rate is affected by long run determinants of our exchange rate. But before I go there, let's look at the relative expected return and how does the value of the dollar tomorrow affect that return today. So our relative expected return is simply the value of the dollar in the future minus the value of the dollar today. So future exchange rate minus the current exchange rate divided by the current exchange rate. Now we are holding the current exchange rate constant and seeing when this guy changes, goes up or down, how will it affect our relative expected return on dollar denominated assets? So if you're expecting the Canadian dollar to appreciate in the future, you get more euros per Canadian dollar. That is going to cause our relative expected return to go up, holding the current exchange rate constant. Demand for dollar denominated assets will increase today and cause the currency to appreciate today. So we can see that over here on the diagram, demand increases from D1 to D2 because we're expecting the exchange rate to appreciate in the future, which pushes the current value of the dollar up to E2. So now we can get more euros for each Canadian dollar. This table over here very nicely summarizes our analysis so far for short run exchange rate fluctuations. So in the first column, we have factors that are affecting the exchange rate. The second column it is describing the direction in which this factor is changing. In the third column, we have the effect on the demand curve, whether it is increasing or decreasing. Lastly, as a result of the demand going up or down, we have the effect on our current value of the dollar or the exchange rate. In this case, I'm assuming we are looking at the value of dollar denominated assets, Canadian dollar to be specific. So we are looking at the value of the Canadian dollar in terms of the foreign currency. On our diagram, remember exchange rate is expressed as foreign units per unit of the domestic currency, which in our case is the Canadian dollar. So let's just go over some of them again to quickly see how they are going to affect our value of the dollar today. These three nodes are affecting our value of the dollar in the future. So I can put that value over here and see whether it goes up or down. And accordingly, it will affect our relative expected return, which will eventually then affect the demand for our dollar denominated assets today. So let's go over the first one. If we are expecting the domestic price level to go up, remember through our long run analysis, we saw higher the domestic price level, our currency is expected to depreciate in the future. Why? Because with higher prices, demand is going to go down. The only reason people are going to buy our goods is because our currency depreciates in the future. With lower depreciation expected in the future, it reduces the relative expected return and thereby causes the demand curve to shift to the left. With lower demand, our value of the dollar today has depreciated. Then we have expected trade barriers, again a long run determinant for exchange rates. 
higher expected trade barriers will increase the demand for our goods and services coming from domestic residents and with increased demand our dollar is expected to appreciate this in turn causes our relative expected return in the future to increase for dollar denominated assets and therefore causes the demand to increase and the increase in demand is pushing the value of the dollar today in upward direction so the dollar is appreciating today because of higher expected trade barriers lastly in this panel i have expected import demand if imports are going to go up that means demand for domestically produced tradable goods going down so our currency is expected to depreciate depreciation remember reduces the relative expected return and thereby causes demand to go down with lower demand the exchange rate for the canadian dollar goes down today so the dollar depreciates today because of higher expected import demand so note it's not just domestic interest rates and foreign interest rates that are going to affect the value of the dollar today in fact it is all of those long run determinants that also play a very important part we can also talk about productivity and any other factor that essentially increases the demand for our domestic asset if the demand goes up remember the asset is expected to appreciate in the future if the demand for domestically produced traded goods goes down our currency is then expected to depreciate in the future and those changes will affect the current demand and therefore the current value of our dollar we have discussed before that domestic interest rate going up will typically cause the exchange rate to appreciate for the domestic currency so higher interest rates in the domestic economy canadian dollar will appreciate However, we have to note where is that increase or change in nominal interest rate coming from? If the nominal interest rate is rising because the real interest rate has gone up, then there is no change in your analysis. Real interest rate go up, nominal interest rate rises, causes the relative expected return on our dollar to go up, and therefore demand increases, the value of the dollar appreciates. However, if our nominal interest rate is rising because of increases in inflation or because of expected inflation going up, then it is not going to cause the dollar to appreciate. In fact, in this scenario, the dollar will depreciate. Your domestic currency is depreciating if the domestic interest rate is rising because of inflation or expectations of inflation. Now, why is that? Remember, whenever we talk about price level changing or inflation changing, it is bringing us back to purchasing power parity. Purchasing power parity theory told us higher inflation will cause the domestic currency to depreciate in the future. So that depreciation is going to push the relative expected return down and therefore the demand is going to decrease and with lower demand, the current value of the dollar is going to go down. We can show this effect on the diagram also. You can see on the diagram, I have quantity of dollar assets on the x-axis, value of the Canadian dollar in terms of euros on the y-axis. Over here, because we're expecting higher inflation, it is reducing the relative expected return and therefore demand is going down. And you can see our current value of the dollar has gone down. Changes in money supply will have a similar impact because whenever money supply increases, it can lead to higher expectations of inflation. So exact same analysis. We can use our exchange rate modeling in the short run to see what happened to the US dollar during the global financial crisis. So now because I'm looking at the US dollar, I have US dollar denominated assets on the X axis and I have value of the US dollar in terms of euros on the Y axis. So this is still the exchange rate but the exchange rate is now giving us the price of US dollar in the foreign currency. Higher the number of euros you get for each US dollar, US dollar has appreciated. Lower the number of euros you get for each US dollar, US dollar has depreciated. So we are initially starting at equilibrium point one where demand equals supply and we have some equilibrium value of the exchange rate. With the financial crisis unfolding in the US, we saw the demand for the US dollar decreasing very sharply and that caused the US dollar to depreciate. As you can see, our value of the US dollar is now 0.63 euros versus 0.73 euros earlier. But as the financial crisis spread globally across the globe to other economies, especially as it spread to Europe, we saw that 
there was a flight to safety. People wanted to hold dollar denominated assets because dollar is a relatively stable currency and the US Treasury bills are one of those safe assets out there amongst all of these other financial assets or instruments which are now crippling under pressure. So with flight to safety, we saw increase in the demand for dollar denominated assets. This is remember now US dollar denominated assets. So with increase in demand for those, we see the dollar actually appreciating because this was a significant increase because of flight to safety the dollar ended up going up even above its initial value of 0.73 in a more recent example let's look at what happened to the british pound with the brexit now the brexit vote remember lowered the expected return on british pound assets so when it was decided that Britain is going to leave the European Union. People are expecting that value of the British pound is going to go down in the future because they know that demand will decrease for British goods because there will be very high trade barriers in European Union. With that lower demand, they're expecting the pound sterling to lose value reducing the relative expected return on pound and therefore causing its demand today to decrease. And as the demand decreases, we can see the value of the pound sterling went down from 1.48 US dollars to 1.36. As you can see, expectations of major macroeconomic changes can have a huge impact on the currency today. All our analysis so far was based upon the assumption that we are working with free flow of capital and we're working with flexible exchange rate regimes where you are not trying to fix the value of the dollar or the British pound sterling. Next, I'm going to look at what happens when we have a fixed exchange rate regime accompanied with global capital flows, free flow of capital, but with a different type of exchange rate regime.